the clouds along here always look awesome. The ones straight ahead down there look like uh, almost like those cartoon clouds at the beginning of The Simpsons. So yeah, just looking at more of the uh, stories of people who got the thing running into some bad luck. Uh, bad luck in the form of uh, death or uh, this one guy, this poor kid, he's like 17 and he just turned 18. He, he was having, um, or he has these, this problem with lesions breaking out on his body. Uh, that it just sounds a nightmare. Uh, he went to the doctor to try to get some steroids for it and nothing worked. Um, he said he has to, he lives in Texas and he's got to wear a long shirts because he doesn't want people to think he's a leper but the uh they bleed into his clothes sounds like what people uh who had air quotes aids were going through in the 1980s and early 90s before they perfected that whole thing uh the azt of course was in my opinion and i'm not a professional doctor i'm not giving any medical advice or but and my theory is that it was the AZT causing these problems and ultimately death. That, and it wasn't HIV, which is a, a non-conclusive test that they come to a diagnosis based on uh, input from the patient and the patient's lifestyle and background. Uh, it's sort of decided you have HIV more than discovered and then you get put on the drugs which in turn uh, create the symptoms that are supposed to be uh, the symptoms of or, or that are, are alike the symptoms that they claim to be part of HIV so they give you the thing this is what we're seeing now um, with with the thing that's happening now uh, they tell you the things out there. You go for the cure, and the cure uh, gives you the thing. And the funny thing is, um, the guy behind the whole AIDS rollout, which is the same strategy they're using now, was uh, Dr. Fauci. Same guy. Same guy. And I'm starting less. Starting less. I'm starting to think less and less that people are just retarded and it's more that they're the uh the veil that's been in place the illusion that's been maintained all this time uh you know i was just thinking the other day about um how we should do research uh i started working with my dad's company when i was very young teenagers like 15. i remember i started working for him to save up to buy uh, an amp to sing out of and uh, a big part of the job in it was, as the years went on, was research. When I started doing it, uh, this is pre-internet. So what you do is, to get research, uh, it was a civil engineering company. So we'd have to go and get old uh, drawings or plans or maps of the area and information about property information. Uh, if you were lucky, they had a lot of the stuff you needed on microfiche. But, Michael Fish. but if you weren't, um, and you had to do both anyway, you'd go into these vaults where you'd have to pull up these, these books. You'd get the book and page or some, of something. And I remember being in uh, Salem, Massachusetts, working on one job, and we were in the vault, in a um, creepy-ass big vault, and inside were all the books we needed. I, I did remember thinking... Why do you need a bank vault for this? It was this giant thick door, whatever. It was a very old building. You know, it was post, it was uh, probably uh, survived the last shakeup. But anyway, the books, it took two men, me and the guy I worked with, or a man and myself at the time, a teenager, in this incident, uh, two guys to pull these books off the shelves. They were these giant, giant books where, like, to open the front of the book, 
it was almost like uh, pulling a, a, uh, a manhole sewer. They weren't quite that heavy, but it was large and like um, really hard, hard to, to turn and look at it. A giant, giant book. It looked like a book that a giant would have. And um, I didn't think this was weird at the time. I didn't think anything about it. I didn't even think to myself, wow, these are big books. It was just like, oh, we, we have to get some of the old volumes. All right, we'd go down, we'd get on this like, step ladder thing. He'd grab one end, I'd grab the other. We'd like, all right, lift it off. And we'd lift the book down and um, bring it onto this table. And then you'd have to pull the... It was what I'm trying to get at, is it was a book that looked like a giant would own. And that's where all the information was. And the print, it was printed too. And none of that makes sense if you're looking at a historical uh, perspective. But I didn't question it. I didn't even think about it. It didn't seem out of the ordinary. It's not because I was stupid. It's because the illusion was intact. The veil was in place. Nothing was breaking down. So not only... So you just don't question it because you don't see it as out of the ordinary. It's only now that things have started to break down uh, that the bale is lifting, the beast dying, the reality engine breaking up, that you can start to see things that you just had, you would see them before, but you wouldn't think about it. It was almost like, you know, an implied blindness. And now you're like, holy shit. That Michelle Obama dancing on Ellen, she's a big giant fucking corn in the cob between it. Why does she have that in her pants? And you're like, oh, she has a, a giant dong in there. I And I'd seen that segment before because at the time it was ridiculed when it happened about just the fact she's dancing goofy on oh, no. Ellen. Now, when you look at it, you see the giant dick. And you're like, wow. I wasn't stupid back then. But I was, uh, everything was intact. The illusion was intact. Uh, the veil didn't, ha hadn't stuck, crumbled yet. I think it kind of all started in 2012. The breaking down. A lot of things kicked up in 2012. And I'm, uh, you're tempted to say, hey, well, the Mayans were right. But I don't know if the way they keep uh, time, the way they keep years and, and record years, I'm not even sure that it was 2012 back then. When it said it was 2012, it may not be 2022 now. We just don't know. But, uh, yeah, I was thinking of that, just having to drag those, lift those giant books around like they're pieces of furniture. And I didn't think, why they, why would they make these so big? Why do they need them? I just, it doesn't cross your mind. So what I'm getting to is, uh, I have to start to begin to understand not everyone's stupid. You know, I mean, they're, they're not just all retarded idiots. It's just some of them are still um, experiencing the, uh, the effects of the illusion. Whether, because it's a, it's a number of different things. It's spellcraft, it's programming, and it's an illusory image placed on the organic uh, background or theorized to have some kind of organic background but I would then say it's not really organic well unless it was imported here because everything that's in here in this closed up dome we have is just energy it's electricity there there's no solid material it just appears to be that way frequency dependent so I think I need to have a little bit more patience with people because I've been, I've been seeing a lot of them waking up now to things, especially with what's going on in, in Canada. Um, it's encouraging, and I think, well, maybe, maybe more will begin to uh, experience things as they are, as the, uh, as the reality machine breaks down. It's happening quicker. All the time, it's increasing in its speed. Just, uh, it, it took a while. It felt like 
um, it felt like nothing was going to happen except for our little group, a little pocket of people that were experiencing things. But it's spreading out now. It's like the bathtub, the full bathtub. You pull the plug on. At first, it's like, ah, uh, it's not going down. But then, as the tub gets to a point where it's almost empty, it's like a whirlpool. <laughs> the end of it goes down fast. Or, you perceive it to go down fast. It's probably moving at the same speed. But, uh, yeah, so I gotta give people a little bit of a break. It's just frustrating. Especially when you've been in this so long and doing this so long. And you're just like seeing all these things happen and you're just like, how, how is no one seeing this, you know? Well, I mean, there was a time when I didn't see these things. You know, the Michelle Obama dick example I was talking about. You know, so, hoping, hoping things, uh, hoping things change a bit. Even if they don't, it, what's gonna happen is still gonna happen. Whether or not people realize what the hell it is, it's just that if people realize what the hell it is a little sooner, maybe uh, some more widespread preparedness can be, uh, I don't know. I mean, what, maybe for some of these people, it's better that they don't know or that they don't realize it, you know? Um, like older people. Yeah. You know, like, you know, I think of my dad and stuff. It's like, would you really want him to know all this stuff? He's got one foot out the door, and you're going to stress him like this. But then, on the other hand, maybe he would want to know. You don't know. If you could even be convinced. I think a lifetime of that kind of programming is pretty rough. But again, I'm pretty old, and I shook it off. Although, I, I, you know, I always had kind of one foot in that, uh, in that world anyway. Very skeptical of everything. Even when I was a kid, I used to really make my teachers upset. Because they want you to ask questions, but they don't want you to ask questions they don't want you to ask. You know, it's like, it, it's, it's fine to do so, but depending on what it is. How you doing, man? Yeah, you too. But, um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, I gotta, you gotta have hope, man. All right. Jumping in the teacher. Blame the school.